Let us open our Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, from verse 13. Luke 24, from verse 13. The word of the Lord reads, Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmas, about seven miles from Jerusalem. That's just over 11 kilometers. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, he was a prophet, a powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this uh, took place. Uh, that's Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 21. I also want us to read Proverbs 13, verse 12. The Bible reads, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. The title of my sermon this morning is The Anticlimax of Hope. The Anticlimax of Hope. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for your faithfulness. You are faithful and true. You do more than we can ever think of, more than we can ever imagine, oh God. More than even what we can pray for, for our faith sometimes is limited. But this morning, Heavenly Father, we want to uh, submit your, ourselves to your leadership, oh God, and to your will that you, Jehovah, you King of Kings, you, Lord of Lords, you lead us into truth, Heavenly Father. We want to eat from the tree of life, and we want to be nourished this morning by your word, which is life to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Great I am, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Be glorified, be magnified even this morning. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Uh, two Sundays ago, uh, we were talking about the Palm Sunday, and that was the celebration of Jesus as he rode into uh, Jerusalem uh, with many people shouting Hosanna to the King of Kings. It was a celebration of a Messiah, a very important critical time in the life of Jesus where he had to be celebrated because that was an opportune time. It was a season where that had to happen. And it was an amazing uh, scene indeed as people celebrated him openly, although uh, before that, months before that, he had to hide because he knew uh, that the Jews wanted to kill him. But he comes in in an amazing way, in a celebratory way, uh, with people shouting out. And even when uh, others are telling him to stop them, he says, no, this has to be done. If they stop, the stones will actually cry out. It was an opportune time. It was a time for this event to happen. And then last week, Sunday, we were talking about uh, the resurrection of the Lord and that it is uh, our life. And so we, the, 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 the events that led to this, what we call Passion Week, were very intense with Jesus being betrayed and being arrested and all of those things that happened that kind of questioned uh, a lot of things about what the disciples of Jesus uh, Christ believed. And that is why today the title of this sermon is about uh, the anticlimax of hope. And we are going to now go back and see uh, what the impact of the arrest of Jesus and his crucifixion, what impact did it have 
in those who had put their hope in him. And how can that same kind of thing affect us uh, as we live in life and certain things that we believed in, certain things that we had hoped for, do not happen. What can happen to us uh, when we are in that state of mind? And then we will be encouraged uh, from uh, the, the reading that we have read this morning that even in such a time, there is hope. Hallelujah. So we see that the disciples had so much hope uh, in their immediate future uh, that they will conquer and become great leaders of their time. Uh, they had discovered the Messiah. You must understand that the um, background of looking forward to a Messiah was a huge thing during the time of Jesus. The Israelites had been uh, hoping and looking forward to the Messiah ever since the time of the prophets, ever since, uh, you know, the time of Moses. Uh, there was a silence of about 400 years uh, between the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, and the New Testament, what we call, uh, you know, from Matthew. There was a silence of about 400 years. And so the Jews were eagerly waiting for a Messiah who will come and change their lives. And so everyone would claim that they were Messiahs and they will be, you know, um, you know, killed by the Roman government or they will have to hide. So there was this hype. Somehow they knew that it was time for the Messiah uh, to be revealed. And so here was the Messiah finally revealed. And those who believed in him knew that life will never be the same again. They knew that things were going to change. They knew that they will no longer be, you know, uh, under somebody else. The Messiah was coming and uh, finally, uh, you know, the things that God had promised over many years uh, were going to happen. The crowds were following Jesus. Lots of people were following Jesus. And those who were closest to Jesus, especially the 12, were the envy of many people who had wanted to be close to the Messiah. So these guys, these leaders who were with Jesus, of course, they felt great about themselves. Many of them, as you know, were not great people before that. They were, you know, relegated to... Uh, those who were at the background, they were fishermen, uh, they were tax collectors, they were not the most celebrated people. And now here they were uh, at the very center of a very great event in the history of Israel and the world. And now they were distributing food. They saw food multiplying in their hands. People wanted to, you know, uh, people, you know, when you are close to somebody great and somebody pulls you by the jacket and say, hey, bro, you know, they, they, they felt that important. Uh, they, were, they were relevant, finally. People wanted them. Uh, you know, when you have been rejected, when there has been, you have not been celebrated and suddenly there is a lot of attention on you, uh, that thing can really, really, you know, create problems for you. So now they were here, they were no longer just some people who are relegated to the background. They were now in the limelight and they were celebrated by so many people. They were hoping for better things, uh, you know, from this elevation. That's why they, they, sometimes they will argue about who will be greatest in the kingdom that is coming, who will sit at the right, who will sit at the, 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 you know, the left hand uh, of, of the Messiah. And that's why it was so, so desperate that some of them even went to tell their parents to go and speak to Jesus on their behalf so that they are both, you know, the vice president and the, the prime minister uh, who sit next to the uh, Messiah. It was such a big deal. And so they, they were seeing great things about to happen uh, in their lives. Now, when eventually... Uh, this hope that they had, this great expectation that they had was smashed, was dashed, uh, was trampled on the ground by the arrest first of Jesus and his crucifixion. You can only imagine what must have happened to them. They were distraught during this time. They felt hopeless. Just imagine the feeling of somebody uh, who sees their Messiah, somebody that they had hoped will change their lives for good. Now the Messiah is chained, uh, he is weak, he is stripped naked, and he is crucified. He looks so defeated, and everyone seems to be against them. How, how would that affect a human being? How would it affect them psychologically? You know, I, I'm sure they asked themselves a lot of questions about uh, whether they had believed a lie. Uh, 
is Jesus really who we thought he was? There were lots of doubt that started, you know, coming into their minds. And they started asking themselves also about themselves. Did we waste the last three years following a false Messiah? Amen. So these are things that happen to us when we go through life and we believe in something, we pursue something, we invest in something, we really, uh, you know, give everything of ourselves to this thing. And then suddenly it seems like right in front of our eyes, it is just disappearing into nothingness. That can leave a terrible feeling uh, in us. When our belief system is challenged, it can totally upset the balance in us emotionally, mentally, you know, psychologically, even spiritually. And it can leave us in a place where we are hanging you know, uh, uh, on the air somewhere and we, we are not established. There is no foundation that we can st say we are stepping on. And this can bring stress and ultimately can bring depression and sometimes even suicidal thoughts. Hallelujah. So these are things that happen in our lives sometimes where we really, really believed something. We really hoped uh, that something will happen and it fails. It can, you know, take us into a dark place, a place of depression, a place indeed where we feel that there is no hope for tomorrow. And we see that with the disciples of Jesus, with this great thing that they expected, uh, we can see that this is what was going on. As we will uh, go back to the text that we read and analyze it slowly to see what was really uh, going on. No, so, so in life, we can go through this. Maybe it was a business venture uh, that you had believed in and invested in, and it didn't go as well as you thought. Instead of making money, you lost money. That can leave a terrible feeling inside of you. You know that sour feeling, uh, feeling yahala <laughs> inside of you and you just want to vomit. You want to throw out because you just suddenly, the thing that you really believed was going to be a great thing now has a sour taste within it. Oh, it is a relationship that you invested so much in. You know, you had given yourself to it, your finances to this relationship, your heart. Uh, you know, <laughs> hallelujah. You have given everything uh, in yourself and invested. You, you, you put money in, you, you were building a future with this person, and then it doesn't go so well. It can leave you feeling betrayed, in despair. It can leave you feeling like you are so foolish because of the things uh, that you did. Uh, or sometimes it can be the church that you were in, uh, that you had believed in the vision and you thought things would go in a particular way. You thought you will find your place in the church and it's not happening. It can leave things. Sometimes it's not just the church as an institution. It is the pastor uh, that you really believed in. He can disappoint you. And what you expected from him does not happen. And that can leave something uh, you know, that doesn't taste very well inside of you. Uh, disappointment, you know, is, is, is terrible. Disappointment can make you feel hopeless. It can steal your faith in the future. Disappointment uh, can bring a lot of trust issues in you where now you don't want to trust anyone or you don't want to trust anything because uh, you don't, you know, somebody that you really trusted disappointed you and this has affected you in a very negative way. So this leaves a feeling of defeat, a feeling of despair, and a feeling of confusion. That if you don't watch it, you can sink in a terrible, uh, dark place of depression, uh, which can be very, very terrible. And once you are there and you can't, you can't get yourself out, sometimes they have to use medication to try and balance you out. And then you get addicted to the medication. And then the medication starts affecting some critical organs in your body. Then you have to deal with a sickness that you never had that was brought about by a solution that you wanted. You know, just things can go so bad and you can look at God and say, God, why me? <laughs> why me? Why am I going through so much? Why is the world against me? Why are you against me? What about my faith? The things that I believed. These are things that happen to us in life as we go 
through stuff. Now, let's go back to our reading and see the state of mind that the disciples were in. What is happening now and what is going uh, to happen? The Bible says they were having a conversation. They were moving from Jerusalem to another uh, village that was about 11 kilometers away from Jerusalem. There were two of them and they were talking. Uh, it was, you know, just before evening time. They were talking about the things that had happened. This was on a Sunday, uh, the third day that Jesus actually had risen that morning uh, from the dead. And they are speaking. And so as they speak, you can hear the despair that is in their, their voices. They have already heard that it seems that Jesus rose from the dead, but we can see that they don't really fully believe it from the conversation that we can see. They had put their hope uh, on Jesus, and now to them, Jesus was gone, and they were not sure what was happening. Even this thing of Jesus rising from the dead and his body missing, they just thought that, you know what, there's a lot of things, political interest, they may have taken him something, but they did not really believe uh, the reality of what had happened. Um, so well, you can hear that these people are semi-depressed. They are discouraged. They are disappointed. They don't believe that Jesus has really risen from the dead. So as Jesus joins them in their conversation where they are talking about all the things that has been happening, Jesus asks them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? Do you think Jesus did not know what they were discussing? He knew, but he had to uh, come in like an ordinary person uh, so that he could explain things to them uh, without having them startled. And so he's asking them, what are you talking about? So they stand still. You know, they don't just talk. They stand still. Their faces downcast. Hallelujah. Now, is somebody who is celebrating resurrection having a downcast face? No. So they were depressed as they were chatting along. Uh, they were hopeless as they were chatting. And Jesus comes and joins them and asks them, what are you talking about? And so they stand still, their faces downcast, and one of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And what things, Jesus asked, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed. You see the past tense there? He was. He no longer is. He was. <laughs> he was powerful in word and deed. His, his acts were powerful. His words were powerful. There was a powerful man of God. Amen. Uh, uh, who was powerful in word and deed before God? And all the people. So they acknowledge that, yeah, this guy was something special to God and to us as people. And the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one. We had hoped, we had hoped, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more? It is the third day since all this took place. Hallelujah. So uh, we will not go further because the, the idea this morning is to show you uh, the despair of people when their hope has been crushed. Hallelujah. Uh, the, 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 the second verse that we read there, it says, um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So in other words, this a uh, uh, verse in Proverbs uh, 13 verse 12 is explaining how their hearts were. Their hearts were sick. Hallelujah. That's why you have that terrible feeling when you are disappointed, when you had put your hope in something. You had this guy, he has been playing along very nicely and, you know, promising that he's getting married to you and everything. And then one day as you go through, you are scrolling through Facebook you see his pictures, he just got married yesterday. You know, that feeling, you know, that feeling. I saw a video of a man who was getting married to another woman and his wife came with children. 
And I said, no, Pastor, this man, he woke up from my home this morning. He woke up from my home. He, he can't get married. They were trying to stop her. The woman was going crazy. Imagine the feeling that you have inside of you when you are excited and, you, you know, he didn't want you to post him on Facebook because he's a very private person. Kandi, he knows. <laughs> he doesn't want to be seen with you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That feeling inside, that just, you know, terrible feeling. It, it, the Bible says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Hallelujah. And so we can see that their hearts at this time were sick. Hallelujah. They were feeling terrible inside of them. Uh, they were downcast. Their faces were downcast. Hallelujah. Um, so, So these are people whose hope was dashed uh, by the recent events. In all of their distress, Jesus appears to them and he begins to encourage them. They don't even notice that it is Jesus. What does Jesus do? He begins to explain to them from the Old Testament, from the writings of Moses, from the writings of prophets, which were very critical. That was scripture to them. And he explains to them that the things that has happened had to happen. Hallelujah. They don't notice it is him, uh, and he comes and encourages them. Do you know that sometimes when you are discouraged, when you are depressed, when your eyes are focused on what is in front of you, what has just happened, God comes to encourage you, and you don't even notice it. Hallelujah. So Jesus was there with them, encouraging them, uh, but they were not even noticing that he was there uh, talking to them. He explained everything to them from the Old Testament to put everything into perspective for them. Things they already knew, he just applied to their current situation. You know, sometimes when something shocks you, when something that you do not expect happens to you, you need to pause and try and remember how things work. Emotions, when you are emotional about something, when something hurts you, when something hits your hand that you did not expect and you allow your attention, your focus to be immersed in that thing, you can miss a lot of lessons that are very important at that time. The disciples were hurt. You know, they saw their Lord chained. They saw their Lord, you know, hopeless as he carried his own cross going to Golgotha. You know, they saw him being stripped naked such shame in front of everyone. They saw people mocking him, you know, uh, saying things. They saw criminals saying terrible things. They couldn't defend him. And so there he was looking all defeated, looking like, you know, he was a nobody, looking like what they had worked so much for, what they had invested in for three years plus was all coming to nothing. This morning, I want to ask you, what do you already know about your God? Will he ever leave nor forsake you? Answer me. Will he ever leave nor forsake you? You are faced with something right now that looks like God has disappointed you, like God is not there. But will he ever leave nor forsake you? Is he a man that he should lie? No, God is not a man that he should lie. Is, are his promises yes and amen? They are. Does it matter how you feel? Hmm? Do your feelings change the promises of God from being yes and amen? It doesn't change anything. Hallelujah. Does he allow certain seasons to come uh, into our lives at certain times of our lives to develop us? He does. Amen. He does. So be strong in the power of his might. It is not yet over. Hallelujah. I don't know what it is that you are facing, what it is that has been questioning your future, but let me tell you, it is not yet over. The things that God has promised you, they remain yes and amen. Come on, give him some clap offering even this morning. Are you able to see God in the chaos of today? Even as the world seems to be, you know, losing direction and, you know, uh, citizens are discouraged, they are complaining, there are so many things that don't seem to be going right, is God still in control? He never loses control, hallelujah. Is anything impossible with our God? 
there's absolutely nothing in impossible with our God. So it doesn't matter what is going on today. It doesn't matter what the discouragements of today are. It doesn't matter what the disappointments uh, are there about certain things that are happening. Uh, maybe the way you didn't think they will happen. Stand firm in the faith, knowing that at the right time you will be rewarded if you do not give up. Hallelujah. You can imagine. Can you imagine how it was like for Mandela for 27 years? Huh? Fighting for freedom that never seemed to come. And his life becoming worse and worse. He was getting older. He was getting sick in prison. In Robben Island where he was socially distanced from his family and many other people. You know. I saw yesterday uh, that they were... You know, the people that are in isolation who are maybe in, in this, uh, that are given oxygen, who are yearning for a human touch, they put warm water in these gloves, these rubber gloves. They put it under the person and on top so that the person feels like a human hand is touching them. Imagine the pain of that. You are sick. You need your loved ones around. They are, you are socially distant. You know, this thing of social distancing is total against uh, the ways of God in the way he has made us. We are made for relationships. And it is bringing depression. It's bringing all kinds of things that are not good. But even in that, God is able to sustain us uh, through it and give us a hope and a future. Hallelujah. So we see that in this passage where we have just read that Jesus did ultimately reveal himself to them. Not only to them, but as they, you know, they went all the way to uh, the, the village they were going to. They ate with him, you know, he, he, and they quickly went back to Jerusalem to tell others that, hey, guys, it's true. Jesus has risen. We were with him. And while they were still talking, Jesus appeared right there with them. He appeared. Amen. Is, will that not be nice for him to appear? But do we really need him to appear to know that he is? No, but he appeared right there, and they were startled, they were rejoicing. You know, they, he ate with them also there, you know, uh, he had fish with them. He allowed them to see him ascending to the Father, and he promised them uh, the Holy Spirit who came uh, on the day of Pentecost, 50 days uh, after this event. Hallelujah. And the church was born uh, on that day, on the day of Pentecost, as Peter who had denied him, stood in front of many people and preached the gospel without fear, without any uh, of the, uh, the, the, the fear that he had before. The church was born on that day. Hallelujah. Now, never allow temporary setbacks to affect your eternal purpose. I want you to know that what you carry, child of God, is not dependent on this world. It does not end in this world. Your purpose is not uh, limited by what is happening in this world. You have eternal purpose inside of you. And that means that you must rise up and do whatever needs to be done to make sure that you never lose uh, that which is ahead of you. Never allow temporary setbacks to affect your eternal purpose. And may the Lord give you strength, even in a time like this, so that you are able to stand against evil uh, that is in this world today. And I want you to understand something, you know, throughout history, sometimes you just need to go back um, uh, and read your Bible and read the things that has happened. The time, the kind of time that we are in, it's not something strange in the calendar of God. Uh, during the time where Joseph was in Egypt, there was seven years of famine, and God used that to glorify himself hallelujah it all worked out for his plans for us there was a, a a message for us in that whole thing hallelujah so whenever things happen never be in despair never think god has forgotten you always know uh, that god is in charge that god is able to work far beyond anything that you could ever think of or ever imagine we also uh, remember the time of elijah there was famine in the land for three and a half years. It was not a, a nice thing. It was terrible. Actually, Elijah was seen as a terrible person even in that time in where the place that he was at. And, you know, but God was in it. God used that same thing to show forth 
who the real God was. He used that thing to show forth that he was the king of kings, that he was the Lord who provided for his people. So even in a time like this, where there's confusion, where there are uh, difficulties, even in your personal life and you are facing uh, difficulties because of you know, everything that is happening around the world, I want you to know that even in that, our all-wise God is able to work all things for your good. And you must look out for that. Hallelujah. You know, let us uh, look out for the things that God has for us. Let us not allow ourselves to be discouraged by the things that are happening around us. But rather, let us stand in faith, knowing that he who promised will never leave us nor forsake us. What happened to the church after Jesus was crucified? What happened to the church after he, Jesus was chained? The church rose up. And here is something uh, that can encourage us. For 2,000 years now, the church has never been stopped. Hallelujah. Jesus crucified 2,000 years ago, rose from the dead. He, the church has never stopped. And the gates of Hades will never, ever um, defeat it. It will never be able to trample against the kingdom of God. And we are part of the church. We are in the church and we will rise up and we know that no weapon that is formed up shall ever be able uh, to work against us and destroy us. Let us stand up this morning as you pray for yourself that you will be able to stand uh, on the day of evil, not only you, but that the church of Jesus Christ will rise up in times like this. And we pray for the revival that we believe is, you know, uh, is about to break that everything, that everyone will take their position because when that time comes, it's going to be a roller coaster ride and we need to have been ready. Father, we thank you that we can trust you with our lives, oh God. Indeed, our lives belong to you, Heavenly Father. It does not matter what the enemy does. It does not matter what his strategies are. 2,000 years ago, you handed victory to us. And today we are more than conquerors in you because you have conquered on our behalf. Almighty God, may you help us so that Christ will continue to live in us, through us, for your glory, O oh God. You are able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever think of, imagine, or even ask for. And we ask that you will help us to recognize that, to know that. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. May your goodness and mercy follow us. Oh, may your face shine upon us. May you give us peace, oh God. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for coming today. May the Lord bless you. May he give you peace. May you go out conquering and to conquer. Thank you so much for coming today. The Lord bless you.